Yo, hello and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. In this reflex image, if this is your first time visiting, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And also turn on the notification icon uh, below. But if you're already a subscriber, uh, welcome back. So in this video, I'll show you how I do this very, very simple manipulation. Simple and very realistic manipulation. I'm going to show you that from scratch. Uh, I'll be skipping some steps. I'll be skipping the background removal process. But I'll be showing everything all through. So let me tell you a few details about the picture. This picture was taken with Canon 60D. A 2 light setup, a Godot 8200 Pro, and a 3520 Flash in conjunction with 2 beauty dish. Uh, that was the light setup using the picture. So now I'll be showing you how I do the manipulation. As you all know, my first step in manipulation is resizing my picture. And the size I usually use is my 4x5. The reason why I do use my 4x5 is that uh, there are certain size for of picture I can post on Instagram. So I don't like Instagram recropping my picture for me the way I don't like. So now I'll just go to my crop tool. I'll put my crop tool over here. Or you can just click on C. It's going to take it there for you. But why using the crop right now? It's not giving me the full details I need. One, uh, it's not giving me the full picture. And if I'm to drag it down, so it's going to give me the full picture. There will be no border room at the top again and that's not what we need so we want everything to be well dictated so i'm just going to drag from up here i'll drag from this downside also so i'll keep dragging till i see if it's don't worry about the white area we are going to fill it out up right now so let me just say i love it this way all i just need to do is just to click on my enter key and it's going to copy it to that, to that size for me so that being said right now the one we have right there now this white area we are going to try to clean it up so my background is a little bit with slants right now. So let me just make amendment to that. Firstly, duplicate your background layer by clicking on Ctrl J. Then click on your Ctrl T for free transform tool. Then I'm going to adjust from the edge over here to make sure it fits what I wanted to do. Let me say it's okay around this way now. I just have to click on my OK. Wait for it to load up. Then I will go to my rectangle marker tool, which is right over here. I'll click on it. Then I'm going to scroll over this area first. Then I'm going to click on Ctrl T for free transform. I will hold down my shift key, then I'll drag to the left. As you can see, click on your OK, Ctrl D to deselect. So the white area we are seeing right there is no longer there again. So we'll do the same thing here also. Ctrl T for free transform. Hold down your shift key, then you drag. Click on your OK, Ctrl D to deselect. So we are going to do the same thing down part also. But whatever you're doing, make sure you're not touching any part of the model or the accessory she's wearing. So now let me zoom in to check. As you can see, it's touching the shadow a little bit, a little bit. So I'm going to drag it down. It's okay around this way. Then I can zoom out now. I can zoom out. So I'll now click on Ctrl C again. Still hold down my shift key. Then I'll drag down. Click on OK, Ctrl D to deselect. I'll do the same thing to this area also. I'm going to scroll over it, Ctrl T, pre transform, hold the shift key, then drag it up, click on your OK, Ctrl D to deselect. So, right now, I've actually extended our background in the best way possible. So, someone might actually tell this how wide the background is, someone might not be able to tell the difference if it is being manipulated right now. And that's the, that's the goal we are trying to achieve whenever we do manipulation. So, the next thing we'll be doing right now is for we to retouch our picture. Well, I actually have a retouch version of the picture with me right now. So I'm going to skip that step for now. So see you guys in the next one minute. So in case you're interested in getting any of my picture editing file, from my overlays down to my color lookup, which is my lot file. So you just have to scroll down to your video. So under the comment, this is my description. So it's not going to load the description for you. You just have to click on show more, click on it. So it's going to show all the options. Once it does that, just click on my store link. So here's my store link. Once you click on it, it's going to take you directly to my store. So you can actually select any file you want. From the color lookup, this is a light skin lots. This is a feather which I use in my recent video. This is 100 premium baby overlays. This is my fourth video course. This video course entails on how to download all the files I want. The site I use in downloading all my files free of charge, including my Photoshop panels also. This includes my PNG files, this includes all my packs, all my picture editing files, my premium overlay, my PNG, my flying fabrics, my color lookup, my presets, 
so once you buy this you've already bought everything apart from this one so here is my flying fabrics here is my in case you want to give me any project for me to work on here is my color lookup here is my background overlay and here is my preset file so in case you're interested in buying anyone you can actually go for them the good news there is that you can actually buy your own currency any currency of your choice you can buy with any currency of your choice welcome back guys so the next step now is for we to remove our model from the background as you all know we already have two backgrounds over here with the background layer and the background copy now so for we to remove our model again from the layer we are we're still going to duplicate the background copy now by clicking on ctrl j as you can see right now so now let's name this one model layer model O D E L. click on your ok so for we to do that right now we are going to pick our polygonal our quick selection tool so click on the quick selection to select your subject then re redefine the edge if you want to know how to do that watch my previous video i already have the selection of this picture on ground so i'm just going to load it up so that to make our video very very fast so i'll go there now i'll go to my select under my select i'll click on load selection then i'm going to click on the one i've selected which is this one right there i'll click on my ok as you can see it actually brought back the entire selection for us which is quite ok so let me zoom in, Ctrl plus to zoom in right now to see what area I'm used to crop out. So I'm going to leave this layout like this. I'm not going to touch that one now because I don't need it. Because it's going to stress me if I'm to remove it right now. And the details there is no need there. So I'm just going to max it, like looking at my max. Instead of me deleting the background. You might not know what it just did now, but we have to turn off the two background layer below. As you can see, we have our model on an entire layer on its own without any background there so we can turn it back on right now so the next thing we'll be doing right now we'll go to the background copy again we're going to click on it so hold down your control key and click on the mouse on the selection on the max you just created right now hold down your control then click on it so it's going to return the selection back for you now don't forget you're not working on your model layer right now you're working on the background copy so after that you go to your select under select you go to modify then you expand click on expand you have to expand by 8 pixel once you're done with that you just have to click on your ok then you hit the delete key after doing that ctrl d to deselect so you might not know what you just did now also so once you turn off the, the background below and the one above you can see this time around you now have the background without the model the first thing we did we have the model without the background this time around we have the background without the model so turn everything back on now after doing that unlike before that we are going to blow out the entire thing because it's a whole it's a single background on its own it's not going to work like that in this particular picture because we have two set of backgrounds over here we have the ash and we have the brown background so we are going to do the boots separately to make your picture look nice so firstly how are you going to do that don't forget to install our background copy i'm going to pick my rectangle marker too you can use rectangle marker too you can use a polygonal lagzo too the other one so let's go with the polygonal for now i'm going to click on it then I'll click where the background started here. I'm going to drag it over the edge like this. As you can see. Once you make the selection for me, all I just need to do is Ctrl J twice, Ctrl J, Ctrl J. So I created this twice now. I'm going to max the upper one to the lower one. You know I created it twice. So right click on it, click on create clipping mask. Once you click on it, all you just need to do now is just go to your filter. On that picture, go to blow, then you click on your Gaussian blow. So, select the number of pixels you want. As you can see, look at how smooth it is right now. So, I'm going to click on my OK. But I'm having two issues right now. Number one, my shadow, my shadow is no longer showing perfectly. And also, it's very obvious that we actually built out the background at the edge of here. So, I'm going to clean that up right now. I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a max on the one I just built out. I'll create a max on it. And I'll pick my brush. Make sure it's on black and make sure your opacity is on 100. So I'm going to scroll over this area like this, the edge like this. As you can see, after that, I'll do the same thing to where she's standing also to make it look more real. I'm going to scroll over it this way. As you can see right now, it's actually brought back our shadows for us, which is kind of very nice. So the next thing we're doing is to do the same thing to this upper layer also. So I'm going to click on background copy back again. Then I'm going to, this time around, let me use my uh, rectangle marker too. I'm going to select round it like this but whatever i'm doing i'll make sure i avoid uh the area this area which is with this which there's two straight line over here so i'm going to avoid that to that area right now 
If not, I'm going to lose the details of the background I'm trying to protect. So I'm still going to control J twice again, control J, control J. And I'm going to max it on each other. Create a creepy max. This time around go to filter then Gaussian blur again also. So it's going to blow it out for me and make it look seamless. But that being said, right now, the next thing on the agenda list now is to add a little bit of glowing effects to the picture. Uh, because right now it's not giving me what I actually need. There's no light concentration at the middle of the picture and there's supposed to be. So how are we going to do that now? I'm going to click on the layer directly below my model layer, which is this. I'm going to click on it. So here's the model layer here, the layer directly below it. I'm going to click on it. Then I'm going to click on my Eclipse Marker 2, which is this one. I'll click on it. I'll hold down my shift key, then I'm going to circle around my model this way. Once I'm done, I'm going to drag to whatever location I want it to be. I want it to be at the middle, which is this. Then I'll just go to my adjustment layer. I'll click on my curves. Then I'm going to increase my curves. As you can see right now. After I'm done with that, I'll click on the max. So it's going to load up the property bar for me. I'll just have to feather it. 700 or so. So here's the before of that and here is the after. So there's a little, a little bit of light concentration at the middle. So that being said right now, your picture is good to go. You can just color grade and call it a day. Export your picture, then you're good to go. As you all know, I love adding some other effects to my picture to make it look kind of special, especially when it comes to my snoot effect. So what we'll be doing right now, we're going to be changing the background color. The reason is that while I'm color grading now, I'm going to have a little bit of issue because the skin color is almost similar to the background to uh to the background color. So I don't like it that way. I want our skin to pop out, but the background color is also killing the vibe of the skin right now which is what i don't like so i'm going to make an amendment to that by changing the background color so what are we doing right now i'll just have to go to my adjustment layer i'll click on my hue and saturation so under my hue i'm going to keep messing with my hue right now until i see what i need i think this green is kind of okay then i'm going to bring down the saturation a little bit and boom it gave me something nice so after getting this background color right now you can start your color grading, export your picture. Just make sure it's as simple as possible. I'll give you I'll be giving out the picture for you guys to practice with. Make sure it's as easy as possible. Don't go extremized to add something that is not supposed to be there and spoil your manipulation. So make sure you do right by yourself. Learn the basic manipulation first before you try to advance yourself. So if your clients even also see this, he or she is going to like the picture. So don't go extra miles and keep spoiling your work, except you are that good in manipulation. So start with the basic man manipulation first, once you're good with it, you cannot advance to the next level. So that being said right now, let me go to my file manager and bring in a uh, texture background to make it look like a canva. So I'll just go to my file manager, I'll look for where it's located, okay, I'll be using this right there, I'm going to drag it down to my Photoshop this way which for it loads up so i'm going to adjust it then i'll hold down my shift key i'm going to rotate it 90 degree 45 degrees sorry then i'm going to drag it down make sure it's slapping with the entire background then i'll click on my ok after waiting for it to load up you just have to change the blend mode from normal bring it down to soft light and boom look at how nice the background looks but the issue I'm having right now is that it actually came with its own color, which is what I don't like. You just have to click on my Ctrl U. Then I'm going to drag down the saturation until it's no longer there. Look at how nice it looks. So we're good to the manipulation now. You can now start your color grading right now. So I'm just going to be using just one lot file, then I'll call it a day. I'll click on the uppermost layer of the picture, then I'll go to my adjustment layer. I'll click on my color lookup, load 3D load, then I'll scroll down to where my load is. I'll scroll down. I'll be using natural fineness right now. Click on it. Boom. Look at what you actually got. It actually changed the entire picture and the background for us, and it's looking all that nice. But that's not what I want. The reason why I created this picture is I want a different background. So I'm just going to bring down the saturation. The opacity i'll bring it down and boom we're done with our manipulation very easy and straightforward and also very realistic enough that's all my own 20 difference so here are the collection of the pictures i did 
A is one, A is another, A is another, A is another. The same collection, same picture. So I'll be giving you guys the pictures to practice with. Uh, I forgot to add my snow defense to my picture to make it a little bit more nicer than before. So for you to do that, you are going to look for your model layer. Is this our model layer over here? So directly below it, I want to click the layer directly below it, which is this copper the something. So just click on it. Then you go to your file manager. So this is the snow that we're using right now. I actually created this myself. I'll just click on it. I'll drag it down to my Photoshop. Now I'm going to drop it this way. I'm going to expand. I'm going to expand it. I'm going to slant it a little bit to make it look kind of artistic in nature. So I'll just expand this way. Then I'll click on my OK. Click on Enter. But as you know, we don't need this shape right here. Oh, we just need it for just for we to make the selection out of it. So just hold down your Control key and click on the layer. I click on it so it's going to bring the shape back for you so the layer I just brought in now you can just actually turn it off then you go to your adjustment layer click on your U and saturation click on your curves sorry click on curves bring the curves up from the middle as you can see so you just have to click on the marks of the marks of the curve click on the marks it's going to load up your property bar for you then increase your feather to you see fit to make it look blurry I think I kind of like it around this way 45.8 so once it's done, you just have to click on your OK. Actually, create a nice note effect, which is very, very nice. Our picture is looking cool, dope. Very simple manipulation. That's why my level of David is being manipulated. So that's about today's tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching. See you guys in my next tutorial. One love.